Uh, in this second part of the video, we're going to master our song in Logic Pro 10. Uh, so just to do a little recap again, the concept is the same as uh, in Ableton Live. We're going to do some uh, EQ processing. So in stereo EQing, then mid-side EQing, and then uh, we're going to do um, some compression, and then uh, saturation, and finally some uh, limiting. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some meters on the master track. I'm going to put a loudness meter, and I'm going to put a level meter. I'm going to turn this into peak and RMS. And the same way as we did in Ableton, we're going to play the song um, when it's the loudest and then start our mastering process. Okay, so let's, let's get started. So what we're going to do we're going to add a channel EQ to start with. And this one, we're going to put it as a mid only. Once again, very subtle changes. Using wide bands. Okay, so that was our first EQ. Then let's go to the second one to process the sides. I'm gonna roll off all this low end. And we're gonna boost the top end. Now we're going to go and use the compressor and in that case we're going to use the VCA Vintage which is also an emulation of a uh, bus compressor. So in that case here I'm just going to turn off the auto gain and all these things. Um, I'm going to keep it at 2 dBs, um, a ratio of 2, sorry, and then we're just going to play with these knobs until something sounds good. So remember, once again, light compression. You don't want to over compress the song. You just want to control the dynamics of the song and then just try to match the, um, the loss of the, of, the, of the volume basically with the makeup gain. So let's do this.
Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Uh, you can also play with this uh, knob here, the soft, the soft distortion, just to see what it does. Hmm, it's pretty nice. Do a little before and after. as well soft is nice and subtle once again it's very important to be subtle okay next step I'm gonna add some distortion uh, we usually use the overdrive and once again, we're gonna go super, um, what's it called? Like really, really careful um, and subtle. Too much already. <laughs> All right, so what we can do, sometimes it's also nice to use a little, you can start with a preset, like warm drive. This is gonna be too much. You can see Let's see a uh, creamy tube, maybe, and see how this sounds, and then we can just dial the drive. Don't forget we added already a little bit of distortion with the compressor, so we just need to be careful. For instance, I feel like it doesn't need too much compression here. Um, oh, not compression, sorry. But here, as you can see, it doesn't really need too much saturation, so I'm just gonna remove this. And what I could do actually is like add another EQ, but this is a cool one that you have in Logic Pro. So I will go to Vintage EQ and I'll go to Vintage Tube EQ Stereo. And this is really to give a little bit of a tone to the track. So let's see what we can do with it. So let's say sometimes it's good to try a preset and then see what happens. Yeah, 
that sounds pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie. And so last step, some dynamics with a delimiter. I'm gonna put my output level to uh, minus one and see how far we can go. So there you have it. This is how you can master your song within Logic Pro 10. So just a little recap, a little bit of uh, EQing, EQ processing, processing the mids, then processing the sides uh, just to make the track a little bit wider. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video or doing the Ableton one, if you have a plugin that is a stereo imager, like you can have it in Ozone, for instance. Uh, you're gonna have a bit more control in terms of the frequent, uh, the bands, the frequency bands that you want to uh, basically boost, um, boost, let's say, widen or uh, make it more mono. You can do this as well. Um, so after this, we did some uh, compression, glue compression where we control the dynamics, then we added a little bit of distortion, soft distortion. And the final step was uh, using the, um, uh, the limiter just to get to that loudness that we uh, desire. So yeah, once again, the L you wanna look at the integrated LUFS for the loudness across your entire song, not just the loudest one. You want to see roughly where you are. Um, little recap again, Spotify is going to have your song around minus 14 LUFS and Apple Music around minus 16 LUFS. And it's not a problem if you are a little bit louder than uh, uh, minus 14 or minus 16. It's better to have these platform turn you down than turn you up because you don't know how they're going to turn your song up. You don't know what type of algorithm they're going to use because they're not going to have someone who's going to do it for, for you. Another thing that you can check is called loudness penalty, where basically you're going to put your song in there and it's going to tell you if it's too loud for Apple Music or too loud for uh, Spotify and they're just going to give you a penalty if you're too high. But this is going to be really handy just to see where you're at in terms of loudness for your song and for these specific platforms. So once you master your track, try it in this thing. Try it in your car, on crappy speakers, on your iPhone, on your laptop. Adjust the different components uh, and settings and once again, it is really important to trust your ears. If it feels good, if it sounds good, just trust it. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I hope to see you soon. Take care.